and around again still with the knit stitch do 10 rows and then we will start on the design on the cuff your 10 rows are done this is what it looks like you can see the heel and the toe really starting to see the shape of the foot now we have from here up to do the rest of the cuff because you just did your 10 rows which was this right here now the texture on this bottom part is a double moss stitch and what a double moss stitch is two rows of knit two purl two knit two purl two knit two purl two you repeat that all the way around then you do two rows of the opposite so you do purl two knit two purl two knit two all the way around for two rows that's all the double moss stitches. You just repeat those four rows. So all together, you're actually going to do five sets. So here's knit two, purl two, purl two, knit two, knit two, purl two, purl two, knit two, knit two, purl two. Ten rows all together of your double moss stitch. Then you do three rows of your knit stitch. Now those 13 rows right there, you repeat one, two, three more times. And that will give you all this texture. Then you do 10 rows of a single rib stitch, which is knit one, purl one, all the way around. Go ahead and do all that, and then I'll show you how to do the cast off. Uh, the cast off, okay. The cast off that I use is the super stretchy cast off so if you get done before i'm able to get to that part of the video then you want to use your super stretchy cast off okay i'm working on the cuff and i am almost out of my yarn it just went from the gray to the white and you want to match it up because you want the stripes to be exact now the spool i was using to do the heel I got to looking at it and I pulled it from the center just like I did all my spools. It's striping backwards because see it goes from white to light blue to dark blue. This went from white to gray to dark blue. So it's striping backwards. So what I had to do was take that center pool, wind it into a big ball, and then I have it striping the right way now. And the best way, you want your stripes and everything to match up exact. So I pulled part of the ball out until I got right at the end of the gray. See right there is where that matches up. And I just held and ran it all together until I come to the end. See? I'm going to overlap and do, you know, four or five stitches together. So I'll cut it a little bit from the end. And there we go. This piece right here you wind up and save and use for a scrap piece or just whatever you would like. And then you can go ahead and work this piece until you get to the end of it and I will show you how to add this new piece in and you will never be able to see. Okay, we are to the part where we can go ahead and add our yarn. Now, it may not match up exact, but you can just see just from stripe to stripe with the little blue dots in them, none of those are exact. But the collar bands should match up pretty good. But one thing you can do, because we don't need much of a tail hanging out. See how I lined them up so that the collars are the same? That will help. And then all you do to add your new collar, because we don't want a bunch of knots. Now this tail I gotta hold on to because I have it real short. I don't want it to pull all the way through. And you tighten it. And then you're gonna want to tighten that too. Just like how we added the new yarn in but I'm going to take and tighten both strings 
And see, we don't need a huge tail hanging out because this is going to hook that in pretty good. And what you want to do is you run both of these strands together as one strand for at least three stitches. I'm actually going to do four. In your next round, you'll have a few pegs that have more than one, oops, more than one little loop on them, and that's fine. But they're ran together, you may not even notice it when you come to it. After you do your three or four, take that one tail, just put it behind, and completely ignore it, and then continue doing your pattern. Now where I'm at, I'm on row 11 of the 13 set and I'm in my third set so I'm actually almost done with my third set so I'm about right here in my socks so I just have that much left to do um, but a few tips that I have found that really helps doing this uh, pattern a lot easier when you're on the rows on your double moss stitch rows your your knit stitches you hold the yarn above so if you have your stitches below it makes it easier to do your purl stitches the yarn is below so if you push the yarn up it makes them easier to do so what I do to help me keep track when I'm going around see I will actually move the stitches up and down before each row if it wasn't for the fact that every two rows you switch back and forth I would just put stitch markers on here and then that would save time but it would be hard to remember okay is this a knit row or is this a purl row and from the back side you can see if you're not sure if you've done one row or two if you look here you can see the two loops so I've done the two there and then I'm on the next row but this is just a purl row okay so that's how you change your yarn Go ahead and finish your sock out. I will show you how to do the rib stitch and your cast. Alright, your sock is all done other than your cast off. Show you up close what the inside of this looks like. It's your last 10 rows of single rib stitch, which is knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. Just repeat that all the way around.